but we're going to make it anyway. And maybe the name will come to us during its creation. What do you think? Yeah, I'm hoping it'll just come to us. I really haven't been able to think of very much at all. Well, it's more than me. I never think so. Um, I'd have to let you know that I have an I have a podcast moniker. It's Chimp. No one actually calls me by my government name. It's okay. Chimp. Okay. I'm gonna try to remember that. That's like a um, um, a pronoun, I guess. That's your pronoun, Chimp. That's my pronoun. It's a reference to. I don't know if you remember. I used to always wear a shirt. Ninety-eight percent chimp. I, I guess I could probably. I I can see it in my mind's eye. Yeah, so I must have a memory of it. So like I, I I used to love that shirt in high school and college, and so it just it, it just takes me back to those days. You know, old, old me. I almost said my name, <laughs> old me, but also it's a reference to um, evolution and the idea that we're ninety-eight and ninety-nine percent, um, cl- um, our DNA is similar to our closest relatives you know the um the chimpanzee the chimps so you know it's a little part of me in the nickname okay chimp i'm, I'm chimp. gonna do my best to refer to you as chimp it's okay anyway so what's going on what should i call you doctor <laughs> you can call me john <laughs> dr <laughs> you, john you can just refer to me as john <laughs> johnny boy um let's see first episode okay so, like, do you want to kind of lay down the groundwork for what you want to explore, what you have on your mind, expectations? I, uh, I think, I think there's a cool conversation to be had. Oh, for sure. And um, I guess uh, I've been watching a lot of pods that um, have been exploring sort of a lot of like new scientific ideas. Um, you know, regarding, I don't know, like the human body and like uh, the mind and consciousness and, and a lot of really interesting new ideas are kind of centered around this pretty sort of like weird high order math, which I'm, I'm not a mathematician, so I, I don't, I don't really, I'm not an expert of any kind. Right. So I, my sort of goal with us, um, having a, these conversations is I want it to be sort of like an attempt at exploring these like sort of complex uh, notions in a way that um, I feel like anybody should be able to. No, absolutely. I mean, I think I definitely think that um, especially now so much information is available to you at the tap of a phone at the, at the click of a button that's what i love you could try and learn so much even if you can only grasp 10 percent of it you could take the time to try and understand it and that little bit will still enrich you in some way and it's really fun uh, like we were having a conversation earlier and like you were just blowing m- my mind with like these different kind of concepts that you're trying to throw at me and it was uh, uh, making me do some like mental gymnastics thinking this and that and that and i love that kind of stuff you know yeah the mental gymnastics are really fun of that that little mind break when when you make a realization that's, but that's uh, like that's how you keep the mind sharp you know like we're not getting any younger as we get older we got to make sure we keep that brain working or we'll lose it yeah so i i, I think there's um you know cuz from what I can tell as of right now, you know, there's plenty of pods out there on YouTube um, talking about some of the ideas that, um, you know, I'm interested in. But a lot of them come kind of straight from the professor's mouth, like it's straight from the person who's doing the work. The expert. Making the discoveries and stuff. Um, yeah, but it seems like there's just so much. Uh, there's I want to say what's the word? Um, a lot of like potential, a lot of space. Like there's uh there, there's consequences to to the things that are being sort of like uh, discovered or or at least uh, suggested by the research that has consequences on I think um, how a person can see sort of like the world or being itself and how mm, it works. I see what you're saying. Okay. And I just think that even they're, even though they're like, um, you know, they're maybe a little bit complicated. And so, uh, it's always tricky because, um, you know, sometimes ideas can get really easily twisted and stuff. And so, um, I think, uh, I think the conversation attempting to understand, but also not just, 
attempting to understand the concepts, but also attempting to understand how to talk about them in a way where you're like maintaining a semblance of continuity and not going full woo. Yeah, that's definitely going to be, especially in like in stuff that it's so it's still cutting edge, if you want to call it that. It's very easy for uh, people like ourselves or anyone really to um, you see this a lot with like like science writers and stuff where like they try to understand the um, the the science at hand and they may not explain it well or they might kind of make assumptions that weren't there and then you come up with these conclusions that just make no sense like oh no that's not what the person was saying you know but that's also kind of fun though it's it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, th I think it's like really fun to it explore is. what's possible but uh, not you know. I'll say I'll probably talk about a lot of like pretty far out there stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I believe everything that I'm talking about. You know, I just we're think just, it's worth we're just doing exploring. mental gymnastics, right? So that kind of brings me <laughs> to like kind of how I wanted to introduce, um, you know, uh, the whole thing in this episode, which um, I kind of wanted to bring up this notion of of um, Gödel's incompleteness theorem, mm. which. I'm no mathematician. I'll be honest. I haven't even looked at the proof, so I don't know how that works. But um, I, I have listened to a lot of Donald Hoffman, and he speaks about it. and And the idea of it is a is pretty interesting. That, um, and this pertains specifically to math. Um, but you know, you can do a little mental gymnastics and, and uh, use it as an analogy. Um, so Gödel's incompleteness theorem states that if you have a group of something. Uh, within the group, you might be able to derive certain truths through proof. Um, but even if you derived every possible proof to know all the truths that were available through proof, there will always be a truth outside the group which you can't access. And even if you could access it somehow, then outside of that, you'll have truths that are not a part of the um, the proofs of the of the group and everything inside of it. Hmm. So it's to suggest that um, <clears throat> systems seem to, at least in a mathematical sense, not allow themselves to be contained. There will always be some outside portion that's unknown, and so like, kind of like how I'm. I'm I'm like tying that in is in that even though we're at a sort of moment in history where we're learning so much and so many weird things about science and, and, you know, quantum physics and all that, you know, it's just kind of so crazy. Um, the weird thing about knowing things is that the more, you know, the more you see that you don't. So it's mm -hmm. almost self, it's almost like already self, um, in a way, kind of like self-defeating because you, you, you try and know things so that you end up knowing, but what actually happens is you know things and you end up realizing, oh, your own ignorance. I don't know even yeah. more. You realize it even more. So the more you know it, and it almost feels like the more you know, the more it's almost like it feels exponential or something. The depth of your own ignorance. You start seeing that, oh, there's more to this well than I thought there was. Like, I really, really don't know. Right. Yeah. And, and so... That's um, true. No, I, I mean, I, I could relate that to like, it's, it sounds like a crazy concept, but it makes a lot of sense. Like, let's say you're learning, like, um, just to relate it back to myself, a musician, like you're trying to learn like a, a, an instrument or, your, or a new style of music. And then you learn a little bit about it. And then you realize that there's so much more left to that learning. And it's something that you wouldn't know unless you try learning it. But then once you understand small concepts within, like, let's say, the style of, I don't know, blues or something, then you start seeing, oh, my God, there's so much more to learn. And you would have never known it unless you, you know, took those first steps. So, it, 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 yeah, like the more you know, the more you realize you don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that kind of now sort of I want to segue into, you know, does that it, it, that kind of implies then that the more you know it's sort of like creating even more to be done sort of in, and in, in that um, once you realize there's so much more you don't know, it's like, Oh, well now I can try and know all of that stuff. And somehow it's, if it's inexhaustible, it's like, 
Um, yeah, where does it lead? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because so how does that make you feel um, knowing that that there's so much more to know to the point that's inexhaustible. So, I mean, we're human beings. We, we only live so much time. We only have so much time in the day. We're never really going to learn every single thing about any one subject or any one system. Or what, what. So how does that make you feel? Does that make you feel like, man, I want to learn more? Or does it make you feel like, man, why am I even trying? No, no, no. I totally, it's not even from that um, perspective. It's really um, because, you know, that kind of, makes me want to segue into um, the sort of Hegelian notion that um, the thing in itself is the sort of just recurring observation anyway. It's like, mm. it's not like I expect there to be a pot of gold at the end that I'm going to be like, finally, I know the thing, you know, but it's simply the, the recurring observation, you know, that's the actual thing. So that being the thing, it's almost like if you put value to that, that that's the thing, it's just the recurring observation by observing more and thus knowing there's so much more to observe, it's almost like inexhaustible value. The journey is the the journey is more important than the destination. Yeah, exactly. And and so the question really that I feel like um, I my big question for 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 this pod was, um, is there is there a limit to how much value you can extract from this sort of like um, idea space? Mm hmm which is the space of continuously communicating, understanding more, thus knowing there's more to understand. And that doesn't seem like, at least according, if you, you know, sort of use Gödel's theorem as an analogy, uh, it's by definition or by sort of mathematical proof that it is inexhaustible. And if you can derive value from ideas, does that mean that the idea space has inexhaustible value? And I mean... Um, you know, so what do you what do you think? So, I mean, you only briefly told me about this earlier. Um, you, you gave me that one line that was, you know, is 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 our basically our our creativity limited? Is is that space of 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 creativity limited? At least at least that's how I understood it. And I thought about that, and my immediate reaction was like, no. And I always take it back to music because that's what that's what I know and breathe. It's that it's not about so much the idea. Of course, the idea matters. The idea is always important, but it's the, also the execution of the idea, the execution of whatever you're, you're trying to do, because you can do like one particular song, like uh, like you, you give one song to like five different people and they all might play it differently or they, or they all might try to remix it or um, recompose it differently. So, um, so, so, so you're, you're saying, so are, are we limited in that creative space? No, I don't think so, because like we can all talk about the same concept, but we all might explore different avenues of that concept. Some people might be better at explaining it on a, on a technical level. Some people might be better at explaining it on a more uh, fundamental, familiar level, you know, like, or some people might just ex explore different, you know, there's so many different ways to come at something. So I don't think it's, 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 um, there's always going to be different ways of thinking about it. That's the interesting thing about it is that um, things go viral and it sort of ideas can sort of propagate. Oh, yeah. Their minds exponentially. Memes, you know, uh, a, a good meme somehow uh, accelerates through minds. And it's some it's it's like almost it makes me sort of feel like it's like a reverse pyramid scheme. And on the uh, you mentioned memes like you see memes come back all the time and it's it's funny because people either either um their attention span and their memory is so limited that they forget that this was popular you know or or or, or they just didn't know about it like that it was that knowledge was not accessible to them at that time for whatever reason either they weren't on the internet they were busy with this and that so these ideas will continue to propagate again and again we'll see memes again and again and again because not everyone has seen them or people just forget because, you know, we're mindless drones half the time. And I mean, what do you call it? Smooth brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I kind of also feel like that is related to the value of crypto ah. because crypto um, and then that crypto. Uh, I know. Yeah, I, I don't I, I really actually felt like I didn't want to get into it. But um, but it's a point that I feel like is is 
uh, kind of too too present there to ignore. Is I'm that sorry, you, you mentioned crypto, and I have to say Bitcoin is currently at thirty nine thousand four hundred fifty five dollars. Thank you very much. It's doing decently for the week. Yeah, it's all right. Well, we're at war, so or we're at proxy war, but right, right, right. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Continue your thought. I, I hate to. <laughs> sorry to break you. No, no, there. it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot. There's a lot going on out there right now. Shit, can't believe there's a country being invaded. That happens all the time. I mean, we're just paying attention. We're, the mass media is paying a little more attention to this one. Yeah, true. But yeah, yeah anyway. Um. So, people teach those ideas you you know valuable valuable stuff like um you know i, I think generally speaking I, I was like thinking about it and i was like you know art is a medium that um is i think majorly like communicating whether it's like a sensation or or a feeling or or whatever abstract notion the artist um may or may not have any had any intentions to um it sort of communicates a thing and so the the value of the creative output has always been just um inexhaustible it's always been i guess really like mostly just limited by the medium right it's like and so now we're in this time where technology connectivity the internet crypto has created this sort of web mesh of of connectivity and data sharing, information sharing. Um, and I mean, I guess the promise or the hope is that it'll, it'll, it'll give power to those creators. And um, so that's kind of where my question is looking at is like, I guess this is kind of, um, you know, is the crypto creative space um, going to, see that drive oh man okay so if you want to talk about crypto i think that there's well there's two things that you have to like there's crypto and then there's bitcoin i mean there's like oh i mean that goes without <laughs> that goes without saying but a, 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 a lot of people talk about crypto when they're talking about bitcoin and vice versa um i'm i'm practically anti-bitcoin i'm not anti-bitcoin but i believe it's bitcoin's pretty boring you know i don't have any i only use bitcoin as the gateway for me like i love the crypto space for me it's just it's just bitcoin yeah yeah no and i think there needs to be every kind of person when it regards i mean like a virtual economy um i think just like analog space there's every kind of person yeah and and, and that's not to necessarily um discount every single altcoin there is i mean we call them shit coins but there's going to be a lot of shit out there. Well, I, because the, 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 yeah. like, the, like the space does, um, it's ripe for, um, for fraud. I mean, we see it all the time. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's ripe for a, a, a lot of speculation, which I think everyone's a part of it. Like there's a lot of people who just want to make money. I know, I know I definitely want to make money, but, um, but then there's also some very interesting projects going on in not just Bitcoin, but in, in altcoins and in shitcoins. So there is that space for like the technology um, is there. It depends on it, it's just a tool. It depends on how people use it. And that's the important part. So e e even if I prefer Bitcoin, people can still misuse the hell out of Bitcoin and it's just as pointless as anything else. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have even much of an opinion on, I don't know, like on the the reason why people might think something's valuable today or not and because I, I i guess i do believe in the technology and i think um in an infant state it's like you don't look at an infant and say why aren't you managing this company well you know it's like it's just an infant like it's gonna drool on itself it's gonna like bump into walls um but i think i think the potential there and and the reason why i asked the question is like this gonna work is this going to like what is going to be the limit to this like potential information sharing web across the world you know the promise of web 3 which is um i i also think web 3 is air, yeah it's air. but it's it's a thing like yeah like web 3 is is the hot thing right now but if you see it's mostly funded a, a lot of it is funded by venture capital which is I mean, the whole thing of web 3 is that it's decentralized but the money funding web 3 quote unquote is pretty centralized so it's like 
you know, like there's the idea of decentralization, decentralization, which I'm I'm all for. I love the idea of um of decentralizing everything to whatever um extent that it, it can be. But you also have, you, you you also have to be careful when Silicon Valley is behind something. The money funding all of that is usually a big indication of where it's really going. And these people are just trying to make money. They're not really trying to change the world. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Something's <laughs> driving something. But oh, mostly... we got to be positive. we got to be positive. <laughs> to, to be honest, I just really feel like mostly people's selfish desires for uh, convenience and for uh, pleasure um, will drive something wherever it naturally goes. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. We, we are greedy people. And, you know, if mm. they want money, they're going to provide it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, nobody needs to actually want to have, you know, actually be like, we want you know, to create this crazy worldwide mesh. But um, if there's a demand for it, I, mean, I don't see why not. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. It's, it's all about the band. I talk a little bit about this w- with, w- with my friend on another podcast about NFTs and games. And he hates the, oh, he's not crypto at all, but he hates the idea of NFTs and games. Yeah, that's really interesting <laughs> because um, I, was, I, I bought a couple desolate NFTs, which are planets. It's like a little VR planet. You can visit it. It's like it's like my planet quotes, you know. Okay. Um, and and it's funny because I don't play video games ever, but the idea of well, because I mean, this is a whole other segue that we can go into now. But um, I mean, because ultimately, I think the value in NFTs is not JPEGs, which. I think the JPEGs right now are just this like really wild, speculative, wild west that's going on. Oh yeah. But um, I think the real value of NFTs um, is simply that you can take an abstract object and trust that it it exists to the degree that it'll persist across time and not just be like an like an Xbox, you know, you turn it off and it's just like gone, theoretically speaking. And um, I knew I'd lose my train of thought at some point. Um, I mean, to me, NFTs, it's like, once again, it's the tool that it's just a tool and depends on how, how it gets used. Like what it is, it's a non fungible token. It's something, a digital asset that cannot be reproduced. And I could think of a ton of ways where that can be useful. Oh, like, th- th- that's what I'm saying is that, um, I mean, to be honest, that's probably the only reliable historical timeline that's ever been. Yeah, absolutely. Like imagine like who's, who's your favorite band? I don't know. Um, Favorite artist? I don't know. Who am I listening to right now? Um, Whatever. One of my favorite groups is is Radiohead. You mm -hmm. know? Like, let's say they had a tour, right? And the first thousand people who signed up or whatever got um, an NFT just for being... Or or rather, everyone who went to that concert got an NFT that that that's put their name... For that concert, just for that date, and only you got the NFT because you you uh, um attended that uh, event. So for someone who doesn't care about Radiohead, is like okay, who who cares about that? But for me, that's kind of like the analog of oh, I got my favorite band's T-shirt at the concert that I saw them, and I had a lot of fun with my friends, and I still have that fucking T-shirt because it's it's I love it. It's like falling apart, but I love it. But this is like the digital analog, the digital comparison of that. And then I bet you in 50 years, someone would be like, oh, man, that's so cool. That's an NFT from like back when Radiohead was still alive and they were big. I would love to own that. That's so cool, man. Like imagine like if someone was selling like a pick that was an old jazz guitarist, you know, like from like 70 years ago. And I would be like, oh, man, I would love to own that pick. So to me, it's just like it's that those ideas are slowly moving into the digital realm because we're not going to have the physical stuff for long. <laughs> Or, you know, like resources are scarce, but I don't know. Just that's not necessarily how and NFTs are used right now. But like I, I see the value of, of those tools there. It just depends on how people use them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's 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 interesting to speculate on the potential. But, yeah. Um, but, but at I, the moment, it's just like kind of really annoying. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I completely <laughs> agree. Trust me, I, I'm tired with NFTs. But I think we've strayed far away from the original uh, premise of this pod, as you call it. 
Yeah, but I think that's okay. Um, I'm trying to see how... Um, how do you want to wrap it up? I'm or trying to see what else like there is to say, I guess, on the subject of this inexhaustible sort of creative value. Mm, and and okay. I'm putting emphasis on the value portion, right? Because, like, sure, you can say the mind is inexhaustible to some degree and as long as you're alive because, you know, what limits are there to thinking? I guess just how fast you can think. But the value from creative, those creative communications um, has always been... Uh, so interestingly without 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 boundary although you know most most art gets forgotten but that stuff that gets like chosen to be very valuable i got you so um, so w w let me ask you what is value to you like w like when do you find something valuable and, and why like in terms of art well i guess it's different to different people of course yeah so that's why i'm asking yeah. what makes it valuable to you well, I guess I'm not looking at it really through my own eyes. I'm just, when I say value, it's not what I value. I'm, I guess I'm talking more about money. Okay. In this case specifically. It's I like, see. Uh, and, but not just money though. It's really not the only thing I'm talking about because, you know, um, if you have a small crowd, you know, even if it's just like two or three people, you're still generating value for them, mm -hmm. which is uh, value in general so it's it's attention attention is valuable i always say that attention is really the only currency um and uh that, that that's actually maybe a good point to hit is um attention itself just seems to be um the most valued thing i mean i think i think you're right but I also think that all comes from this internet economy of, you know, like people scrolling through their feeds. I don't think so. I think that and just amplified it. I, th I think that is, that takes that idea and it, it, it amplifies yeah. the hell out of it. Absolutely. But I, I could, you could even argue that, you know, attention was even more valuable in the past because there's less communication, which means that you needed to get attention in real life in order to actually do things, get to know people, you know, try and make your living, uh, try and sell your stuff. You actually needed people's real physical attention. Whereas today you could kind of be a uh, cyber life and there's still a tension there. Um, arguably more of it. Um, but right now you're also being bombarded by a lot more things trying to grab your attention exactly because it's so valuable and that's what everything's valued by is how many clicks how many people how many eyeballs are on your on your page you know um that is how people like because a lot of these uh sort of like you know tech situations don't even turn a profit so that's the thing i i feel like that's not that's not what people value that's what that's what um silicon valley value like like that's what like the corporations value yeah I because mean, because about. that because that's how they're measuring their success like because it's not that unless people are actually talking to them and saying hey i like this i like that i don't like this i don't like that people who aren't willing to do that the only way they can measure the success of their product a digital product most of the time is by surveilling them so that's why our clicks are surveilled uh, that's why Facebook um, sees where your mouse goes, where it stays, for how long, why, where it moves. Why, why are you saying? Why is it that they track all that? Because they want to basically try and understand what this person is thinking. You think? And is their service valuable? Why? Why? Why would they want to understand? To sell to them. or so, or, or, to, to keep their attention. Or build that product around them. Yes, no, I, I, I agree with you on the attention thing. But it's just that... I think there's a, another part of it. Like you don't have to survey people to um, to get um, to learn more about them and be able to like sell your product to them. You know, it's well, of course, but if you can, they will. You know, because it's free money. That's what I've been trying to get away from in the past couple of years of my you life. You mean like by reducing the ads you're exposed to? Uh, by taking Google off my phone, I've degooled my phone. Um, I try to avoid. I've, I've I got off social media years ago. Yeah, I, I've, I'm sure you know it. Is like I don't have any social media. I never got a TikTok. I never got an Instagram. 
never got any Snapchat, none of that shit. I mean, it's just a personal thing, but fuck that shit. Yeah. It just takes up your time. It's it's a dopamine hit. It's a, and TikTok has it figured out. Dude, they are making bread, dude, cuz that shit works. But I don't need that shit. Yeah. I mean, I don't really feel very much one way or another. I have social media and I have a Googled up phone. I don't even care. Yeah, I mean, you know, th- uh, that's different reasons cuz you know, it's just like I don't want to be tracked. I like I like my privacy. I know to a certain extent, privacy doesn't ex- 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 privacy does not exist on the internet. I feel like, but I try and limit it. I feel like, um, yeah. I mean, I I don't I don't even care about being tracked. I guess I just don't feel like I'm worth uh, <laughs> worth observing. But um, yeah, that, that kind of makes reminds me of one thing that um, I don't know if I wanted to mention this episode, but you know you. When 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 I think about um We'll fix it in post. <laughs> uh I w- I've been thinking lately about like uh the the subconscious, you know? And um I mean so many things just from the past few months that have blown my mind that have s- are sort of like I'm trying to think through, but I'm getting the feeling more and more that I've I've been saying that the subconscious is kinda like public property almost. Like your subconscious, I feel like our bodies, I feel like, are having a whole conversation, like a deep conversation, that is completely not in in within, you know, like the attention of our conscious ego. Um, How do you think it manifests itself? Through like body language and um, feeling, you know, like uh, like it, if somebody gets creeped out, you know. Yeah, uh, some people have their feelings written on their. Ace. Right, and and but the thing is, I feel like there's an assumption that you even have to observe them. But I really feel like um, almost to I'm beginning to think that there's actually I'm beginning to think, and and this is weird because um, you know I um, I love Young. I've always been into Young since I was uh, like in high school. Carl Young. Oh, Young. Oh, and yes. he always talks about the collective unconscious, which is an idea I never really liked because I was just like I needed you know I needed some sort of um like how do you show that that there's any connection between minds yeah um but i'm beginning to feel like you know our observation and our idea of of unity is is really kind of like a thin veil over this um communication or communion between everything that um is like always happening and expressing itself and and almost like being hidden you know from our kind and, and obviously this is, i feel like this is like definitely like not new or anything but um just uh from like recent sort of like experiments and stuff that like suggest um certain things or or, or ideas but but just that notion that like um you know like when you say you like your privacy, it's it's I guess I've just lately been feeling so open, like feeling like, you know, my conscious observation of my unified self is is such a um, sort of like a funny little trick I play on myself while underneath really there's this like communion expressing itself with everything. Oh, absolutely. I mean. So just to quickly respond to that, I'm a very open person. I'm a very, very open person about myself, my feelings, my thoughts. To the people, whoever wants to ask, whoever wants to know, I'll talk to you. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I think, you know, period. And not in a bad way, but like also my feelings. And if I feel close enough to you, I'll express like, oh, this or that, blah, blah, blah. But see, that's what I choose to do. Like I choose to be open with my friends. I choose to like, uh, like to sh- um to, to, to show that you know that that human connection. I love it. That's actually what I think the most beautiful things about life is the com- is the connection between humans that they could have, whether they're they're blood relatives or not. Like it's when you just listen to each other and have that empathy. It's fucking beautiful. It's different when I'm not giving my consent. It's different. When someone is just fucking spying on me. Fuck you. 
but um so on that note with um with communication i i completely agree it's like our bodies are completely giving out a lot and we don't even notice do you, uh, that makes me you know wonder like where do you draw the line at simple communion sort of just because you know you and i are in the same room you know of course like we're friends and i'm looking at you and and you know i'm sure you don't have any crazy walls up to like you know you, but like at what point you Is know there a camera a, in here a stranger oh that's right there. you know a, a stranger <laughs> passing you on the street that looks at you like wh- at what point do you call it spying right it, it just makes me wonder if like because do you say hi up to people on the street rarely maybe i may I always say hi i it depends for me it depends like if i if there's a connection i'm more likely to say hi if they look at me i'll nod my head uh, yeah. some people will actually yeah. say good morning yeah other people would just be like what's up it depends on what mood i'm in yeah other people would just be like fuck you <laughs> um it, it so uh, i just feel like online life now is like yeah you, you it's it's almost like i feel like it's like the subconscious it's like we're kind of cursed to constantly be being watched and like yeah you take as many necessary like precautions as you need for yourself in the same way that like uh you know you we put as many locks on the doors we need to keep anybody you know from coming in making sure they don't um yeah i mean I, I guess at this time, at this moment in my life, I, I got a pixel and I'm just like, I know Google's going to be fucking reading everything that I do. But, um, that's the thing. It's not even, it's their, it's their computers reading it. It's their algorithms right, s- parsing right. through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just seems like, I guess, too much effort for me to, so, you know, what's funny though, is like when I'm, when I'm on my phone, I'm surfing, scrolling, like basically my whole behavior on my phone is predicated on that notion that i know i'm i'm basically and some people don't be wrong some people want that because there is a huge level of convenience that we get from yeah, yeah. from this like i like trust me when i dig over my phone i realized how much i dependent i was and it's, i still am i still have a gmail i haven't gotten rid of my gmail so I'm, I'm still on that tip but like we realize how dependent we become up, up, upon these these not the devices but just internet services and yeah so whatever you have internet services but then you have these monster conglomerations that just, like Google or Amazon, just try to put every single service under their roof. So then once you're stuck on their network, whether it's Google or Apple, they have all your stuff. Like, okay, don't worry, we'll take care of your email, we'll take care of your payments, we'll take care of your photos, oh, 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 oh we'll take care of your voicemails, your texts, all of that. Yeah, just come over here. All you need is just one login, one password, and we got you. And it's convenient. That's so seductive. People are forgetting their passwords all the freaking time. Of course, somebody wants that convenience. Like, you know, I'm not going to like judge people for that. Like it's, it's a trade-off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not like I want to live my life off the internet. Like I love the internet. I grew up on the internet. Like to me, it's, it's just, it's fucked. (laughs) It's fucked, man, because we need decentralized internet. Fuck AT&T. Fuck Comcast. We need local decentralized internet. Yeah, it is hard running that shit, you know? It's, it's not going to happen. Who wants to do that? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Who wants to do that? But um, so going back to the conversation about communication and everything. So I think a lot of that, because like, like I tend to like look more at an um, evolutionary point of view just because from how I grew up and how I learned in school. And it makes a lot of sense because like we're very commutative creatures. Like we are very, like before there was a language creatures were like mammals were still communicating you know and and even like the the animals outside we may not understand their language but they're communicating they're communicating different ways whether it's through visual or non-visual cues it's there so that that connection was always there and then we started developing language and this and that and blah 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 so yeah I, i think you're absolutely right so like so we're totally giving ourselves away our subconscious is giving ourselves away without without us noting it noticing it and you may be doing something and then i may not constantly realize it but my body may constantly realize it and then react to it and then we're having this this conversation on top or rather i should say below the conversation that we're actually consciously thinking about right yeah exactly and i mean i think that speaks to every form of self you know uh, you know how to be 
charismatic, how to get people to like you. Oh yeah. How to like the laws of power and and um every yep. everything out there that is to help people be less awkward in social situations is like um Right, definitely. I mean, definitely yep. a part of that. And I feel like a lot of that even could be, you know, and, and the point of, all, of this conversation here is to sort of like, well, instead of thinking about it as like, you know, you're, although it's, I know it's difficult because it's like letting go of the idea of a unified <laughs> self <laughs> is like kind of silly. But, um, you know, instead of looking at it as like something that's like wrong with you that needs to be changed, it's, it's sort of like a, uh, seeing it in that in that perspective just uh for me is like useful it's to see that to sort of like consider that um there's this underlying communion constantly happening that you are reacting to and your body is engaging with yeah um but you know that the story that you're the narrative you're writing for yourself constantly is like maybe too caught up in itself to like be able to like what un- notice that underlying narrative well enough to engage with it no yeah i agree i mean it's i think it's a matter of becoming self-aware like if you're not aware of like what you're doing like or who you are in that sense in these different aspects then you're not going to understand the the whole picture because i mean like you know you like do psychedelics and the idea kind of like gets thrust on you you know oh, suddenly yeah. you're you're melting into everything and and you're like, how? Where does that even come from? You know, but um, yeah, I think for me that's that's definitely where it started. I started at a young age, and it was just like you said, thrust. You were thrust into this world, <laughs> and you had to make sense of it. And I think that just is is that window into like that space where actually things, every everything's just communion, communioning. Um, but like uh, you know, you need the veil of that unified self mm-hmm. um, to do whatever it is i guess that you know we survive and eat and enjoy <laughs> yeah for me i think that's where a lot of my paranoia came from i don't know if i was always that paranoid before drugs but definitely there's one person I, w- I won't say who like who like brought me into this world of psychedelics and um substance oh. use uh, mind altering substance use and it was always like okay you're in a different world don't try and call anybody. <laughs> Don't try and talk to people. Like, they're not in the world that you are. You know, like, unless you're in someone else with in that world with them, like, try and, you know, like, stay to yourself. <laughs> in other words, you're trying to tell me, don't go out there and look like a fucking fool. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I definitely wanted to share this one, probably my most significant mushroom trip that I've ever had in my life. I was in high school. Um, I, uh, I took him at night. Uh, you know, as I was going to bed and, you know, how Terrence said, you know, five grams in a, in a dark room, <laughs> um, it was more like, uh, four grams, <laughs> uh, put on some like Mozart, uh, and, uh, start peeking, start just, you know, crying, I mean, like so uncontrollably, my emotions are just all over the place. And, um, you know, I was having a decent, nice, just trip, kind of like uh, seeing some soft visuals. But as I started peeking, you know, um, I could see this like dark spot in the corner of my eye. And like, you can kind of tell right away. It's like, something's going on here mm. that um, it is kind of ugly. <laughs> but the dark spot kind of kept getting bigger. And, and, and I was a little bit like, oh, man, I really don't want this to happen. Like. I was like trying to like really slow it down. Control it, yeah. Uh, so slowly it started kind of engulfing my vision. And um, so I see in the distance is like, I'm kind of like in space and there's a planet like a little ways away. And I'm like just slowly headed towards it. And I'm like looking in, and as I get closer to it, um, it becomes clear to me that the planet is um, made up of severed body parts. Oh so, God. so the planet is to kind of like try and get across the idea of scale here, right? It's like a mass of, of, um, undulating severed body parts. There's blood, there's bone and, and a severed body parts very sad because it wants a body. 
a severed body part knows that something is extremely wrong. There's a great story in that, so like a short story or like a, like a manga. That I love that. And it's so awesome. like I am begging, I am begging some whatever it is to like please not take me there. <laughs> but <laughs> I slowly approach That's where you're going <laughs> until it pushes me in, and I go in. And it's crazy, man. I, I remember the tactile sensations, like hands clawing at me as I'm being pushed. And and just in, in, in a I was like wrecked, uh, you know, like because I could hear like the despair of all the body parts looking for unification. <laughs> and like, you know, I, I basically felt like um, I don't I couldn't fathom why anybody would ever bother to do anything. Because at the end of it all, it's all ripped out from your hands anyway. Always for everyone. Yep. So why bother trying anything at all? It's the journey, not the destination. So I was in there for I don't know how long. It probably was not as long as it felt. But it felt <laughs> like I was in there for a long time. Eventually, though, um, I kind of pop out the other side. And there's this sort of like sunrise and um and kind of just like uh sort of the analogy of the night and the day i just kind of like have this like renewed sense of like um hope and just kind of feel and remember that you know y you wake up every single day and it's it's another shot it's another shot to um at least get something get something right for a brief moment um even if you know despite how much sliding down you've done you'll always get another shot the next day yeah you're absolutely right and that's just how i felt i mean that 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 just like has stayed with me forever that was that was a truly a perspective <laughs> shifting experience I think we both have the same perspective. Like, if you still keep that perspective in your life, like I think we have a similar perspective. Mine is... As long as I could die happy right now, life isn't so bad. But yeah, like, you can, like... You could still... The next day, you could still make stuff better and this and that. But, you know, like, you never know when death is coming. It can come in 50 years. It can come tomorrow. But as long as I know right now that... If I were to die right now, I'd be okay. You know, like, I basically did what I wanted to do within, like, reach of what I am able to do. You know, like, obviously you can't do everything, but I got the basics down. I got, you know, like, because like I was saying earlier about human connections and everything, like, I got the important stuff down for me, what was important to me. Like, if, if I were to die now, there would be nothing left unsaid. <laughs> It would suck. I don't want that, of course. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, it, the consequences of like, let's say, um, no, I'll save that for another episode. <laughs> so let's let's wrap it up. Um, so, how do you want to structure these episodes? How do you want to like? I kind of want to break it up into clips and have a one long continuous one. Okay, cool. So okay, so you want to bring in some clips? You want to like? talk about like a certain subject and um okay cool no it's fun I've, I've had i've definitely had a lot of fun talking even if it's just having a conversation without the mics without the camera it was fun but it's always so much nicer when you have the professional gear you know no yeah i mean no <laughs> and i just think that um i think the yeah we have, we have a good flow and i think it's worth recording <laughs> oh yeah i do think it's worth recording yeah are there any, um, is there anything else that you wanted to explore? Any other ideas you had? I don't know. I guess not for now. I guess we can wrap up. Um, I feel like if you like, let me sit here, I definitely like think of something, uh, you know, for us to try and get one more, one more couple of minutes out. Um, but, um, what was your day like? <laughs> um, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> no, I mean, interesting, interesting, you know, um, really nice italian dinner it was the place we usually go to where'd you go now it's totally different 
Um, oh yeah, that happens, man. It, now it's totally different, but it's like better. It's like nicer. It's it was like way more Italian now. And oh, and it was like very funny. It was it was like festive, you know, like giving us f- free drinks and free dessert. And we're, the hey, whole time yeah. I'm like trying to be like I'm late to the pod, <laughs> and they're like, no, you gotta have a free no, dessert. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, like. They may be trying to keep business. I don't know. But the thing, I mean, right now, attention, son. They need that attention. But the thing, like, like you can't really have that conversation right now in South Florida because I feel like so many people have been moving down here in the last two years, dude. That like, our tourist industry has to be booming. It really has to be booming. Like, we must have like recovered tenfold. And there's still a lot of people out there who don't want to travel, don't want to do some of that. Yeah. They're, they're not in Florida. They're, they're fucking coming You know, here. as difficult as the past <laughs> few years have been and as crazy as shit is now, um, it seems like we are lucky enough to be st- living in a city that is made almost the only one in the world that has just thrived. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad we're here. I Like, in my job, like, I... St- Spend a lot of time speaking to people from all over the country. They call in. I, I handle calls, and all of them are like, "I'm going to Florida, or I'm just not blah, 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 I'm going to Texas." <laughs> it's like, yeah, everywhere else sucks right now. But yeah, yeah. So you know, I I want to read books, talk about books. You know, if you read anything, totally. Let's you know, if you want to bring it up, um, I I probably look into some um like papers that uh. There's like a few couple of papers right now that I can think of that I'd like to read uh, to talk about. Um, I mean, I'm not really reading anything scientific per se. I am re- reading something right now. Um, the Hunter Gatherer's Guide to the 21st Century. And it's kind of an interesting book. It's just it takes like an evolutionary biology perspective on like. Um, humans, how humans have changed from those hunter gatherer years to now. And how those changes in our day to day life affect our our bodies, our minds, you know, our our interpersonal um, communications, this and that. Like it's 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 pretty interesting how like they're not taking like a very big stretch on it, but they're just looking at like, like this is what has changed, and this is what it probably affects. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so it's, it's pretty. Interesting. I'm sure it'll be interesting when we talk about Hoffman's work. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, if there's anything to, um, to, to, uh, you want me to read, I'll definitely read it. I love reading. Um, but I mostly read manga, I'll be honest. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't talking science either. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking, like, um, weird, you know, weird, probably, like, weird philosophy and, and uh, like, Carl Jung and psychoanalytics and Wait, stuff. Isn't all philosophy weird? I mean, people who, people who are philosophy majors, in my experience, were pretty weird. I was a philosophy minor, and damn, they're weird. No, I was a history minor, but I took a lot of philosophy classes, and damn, were they weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever even like, I don't know, people that study philosophy. Yeah, they're still my friends, but they're weird. Yeah, I, d- I mean, and the thing, I don't know. The thing is, I'm, I'm very picky when it comes to, I guess, like, philosophy, but I've gotten more into it in, in the recent years. Um, certain, certain kinds. Um, I don't know. I have like a thing against like logic, you know, um, for, but I don't even understand it. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, logic is different than what like the logic that like, like if you, if you say, oh, like, oh, that's a very logical approach or, or something like that. It's not necessarily the same kind of logic right, right, that's right, being right. talked about in philosophy. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess like even my attempt with this is to like avoid jargon. You know, I, I, I want to try to like break it down, look at, yeah, like these really complex things um, and, and give them a sort of like a voice for anyone. Yeah, no, I like that. I completely yeah. agree. Yeah, because the, the, the jargon, that's that's one of the things like jargon pushes people away, because unless you're in in that world and you're no, and you're well read, it, it totally pushes you away. Yeah, exactly. Like you have to be. In the study, in the know, to, you know, to you even have a conversation. Exactly. Oh no, you can't read this. You have to pass the test first. Then you could enter this world. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I, I agree. Like it should be available to everybody, and yeah, because there's always interesting ideas out there. Yeah, I mean, uh, so I'm reading right now, um, Bataille's A Cursed Share, which um, it's a really, really interesting idea. He was a French writer. He was friends with like Sartre and and. Um, 
I don't think he ever knew Nietzsche, but I, I think uh, maybe he was a fan of Nietzsche's. Um, and so the book talks about this sort of like, he takes a look at biology and civilization, human civilization, and he kind of like points out this one sort of notion that um, a biological creature sort of always has this excess of energy which is to say that it has more energy than it necessarily needs just in order to survive. Mm. And that excess of energy, a lot of the time, um, will go into, um, like, let's say in the animal kingdom, you need an excess of energy in order to give birth, you know? So that excess of energy is like there for, for this like continuity. You by definition need to have more energy than you need just to survive in order to create like a new thing. Makes sense. So when you look at human civilization, um, you still have this excess of energy going on, but in the scale of civilization, what you end up having is um, either uh, an expenditure of that energy through some sort of mass sort of luxurious expenditure, which is a celebration or even just a, a, a waste you know, or a festival or, or you end up diverting that excess energy into like a war state. Um, and he makes these really interesting, uh, cases, cases for it. Um, which, which the notion I, I, I find so fascinating because, um, I guess it's just that sort of thing that drives like collective individuals um you know why do we love at the first opportunity we get to waste our resources on a symbol of luxury you know um or or once we have the means deciding to go invade another country just to get this out I mean, I think for 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 part of it, it's definitely a learned thing, especially like, like like you're saying, like like wasting these resources on some sort of symbol luxury. That's that's def- to me, it's definitely a learned thing. Hmm. Like, I yeah. guess that's why I guess that's why I find this fascinating because I would disagree, and I think that that need for an expenditure of a luxury symbol actually goes into biological evolution. And it stems from this notion that to be alive, you need excess energy. Mm. And I think, you know, when you look at males in, in, um, in nature, you know, they've got these big horns. Those cost. That's a big energy cost. So, you know, that's bigger than you really need just to survive, right? But you do it because you want to, you know, show that you can burn that energy. You know, you know that's your luxurious symbol. And then, you know, you get that um, attention. You get the attention of of the tribe and the, you know, mating potential and, and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I, I definitely agree. But at the same time, like, so then someone could just, like, really work out and, like, have big muscles. And that could be their um, um, energy expenditure, expenditure, whatever, their excess energy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, exactly. You're like, but choosing, it. but choosing to like buy something, like let's say, like get like a really nice like gold watch or something. That's a learned thing to me. It is like, why do some people like hats? Why do some people like gold watches? I was never really a watch person. I was never really like a necklace person. So people like wearing all that. You know, what if what if we're having a conversation with the watch? Like like going back to my sort of like you know illusion of the unification. It's like. What if we understand, you know, and maybe it comes from just knowing the fairy fact, but like, what if we have an understanding that, you know, the diamond in the watch is a consequence of the power of the mountain that, you know, crushed it with so much concentrated energy, Yeah. you know? And I feel like that's, uh, I mean, of course there's fake diamonds <laughs> and you wouldn't know. <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 I think you're right. Like, but like. So I'm so I'm someone who would rather spend my money on like a nice guitar or a nice mic or you know like something luxurious in a different way but oh yeah that I has mean, more value to me. Yeah, I mean I guess I I guess I don't I feel like I differentiate. I mean of course your expenditure is your you know free your 
frequencies, you know, you definitely don't have to do that. And, and that also, I feel like goes back to sort of the abstract economy, the value of the creative pursuit. Um, it's sort of that excess energy that something about having that excess energy and, and doing something with it, it, it creates this magnetic attention yeah, which, no, it definitely does. Which attention? I, I still, you know, tension. No, I mean, why do people buy like really nice cars when they don't need to, and they have like several of them? <laughs> like you need like one or two cars. People get like ten cars. It's crazy. Yeah, they just spend their money. That, like you're saying, like they're trying to show off. They're they're trying to like show like, oh yeah, this is what I got. Yeah, it, Bataille wrote about this one practice. I I forget where exactly. Maybe it was like um, some Asian um region uh some asian region like maybe some different dynasties or stuff but so it would be sort of like a a very offensive uh taunt to send s if you have sort of like a rival mm -hmm. um maybe like a rival king or something or prince you send them a very lavish gift mm. and that is just like because now you have to send something even better or you lose. That's hilarious. That sounds like something people do now. <laughs> <laughs> that really does. It's just like, oh, yeah, no, but they got us this, so we can't get them anything cheap. We have to get them something nice. <laughs> it looks bad. And well, I, I, I know people like that. I know people who do stuff just because of how it looks. Oh, man, yeah. that's Just that's how it looks to other people. I mean, yeah, yeah but that, that definitely, I feel like, is that part of like that veil of the uh you know the sense of unification which which more power to people I, you know i suppose people enjoy them you know I suppose, enjoyment yeah. i think enjoyment's the most valuable thing <laughs> but um on that note wait you, i lost my train of thought yeah i lost it's gone it's falling to the either it's falling falling i think so is my yeah it's almost midnight all right let's sign off all right so thank you for joining us hello camera i hope you're still on i don't think the battery died oh well oh no way that was our pilot episode for a pod to be determined tbd damn the camera died i thought it was gonna be like an hour and i think we did longer than an hour sure <laughs> we'll find out in a second but anyway um we hope to see you again soon hopefully make this we make this a weekly endeavor Hopefully we keep it interesting. Hopefully we keep it. I think we'll keep it interesting. We got plenty to talk about. Peace. Uh, cue music. Dun, 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 dun.